I have to say that I am not only pleased with MLS teams making an effort to be more aggressive in improving their rosters during this secondary window. I am highly impressed. And at the same time, I'm kind of surprised because I didn't think that a lot of teams will be this active this summer. I was thinking as we get a little closer to 2026, maybe 2024 or 2025, teams will be extremely active. But no. And this is all part of the Messi effect. If Leo Messi wasn't in MLS, I cannot confidently say that we will be seeing a lot of these teams being as active as they are. Maybe it would have been closer probably to the end of this decade. Who knows? But last week, the most active teams were Miami, LAFC, and New York City. But now, Atlanta has joined the fight. And I strongly believe that Atlanta is sending a message to the players that an early League's Cup exit is unacceptable. Atlanta's performance in the League's Cup was unacceptable. I didn't like how they played against Miami, and I didn't like how they played against Cruz Azul. Garth Lagerway did not like the way they played in the League's Cup. Neither did Mr. Home Depot. And Mr. Home Depot is telling Garth Lagerway He's telling him, he said, Garth, do all you can do to make sure that this never happens again. Atlanta United was embarrassed in the League's Cup. And Atlanta United did not meet the standards of representing the A. They did a terrible job representing the A. But this is not too much about Atlanta United. Columbus. Let me be honest. At first, I was getting ready to say the season was over for Columbus. And I'm so glad that I did not rush to judgment. Because the performance that Columbus put on last night against Club America, that was a championship performance. The performance that Columbus put against Club America, that was the best performance on Monday night. You see, Columbus told us, Columbus told the nation that they are not a one-man club. Columbus is telling us that they are a soccer factory. And and Wilfred, Na Wilfred Nancy is telling us he has enough soldiers in his army that is willing and ready to step up whenever one man is down or when, whenever one man goes away. And that's what Columbus showed us last night. Two guys stood out to me besides Cucho Hernandez. Cucho Hernandez, he's a guy that I'm not concerned about. I'm never concerned about. I know he's always going to show up. And the, the 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 nights where he's not playing well is most likely either due to fatigue or a little nagging pain in his body. But the two guys was Moriea, sorry if I pronounced the name wrong, and Ramirez. Moriea looks like 
He can be the X factor. He was the one that set the tempo. He was the one that kept the high energy, high level of play going throughout the entire night. Ramirez, he served as an important sidekick. Ramirez was always around. Whoever had the ball, Ramirez was always in the area. You see, Moriella and Mar Ramirez, their hustle, their effort, those two guys were big factors in assisting Cucho Hernandez lead the team to victory. So, Columbus still looks like the best team. I mean, one of the best teams in the League's Cup. Yes, I have to correct myself. I'm not going to say best because Philly is still in it. New England is still in it. Cincy is still in it. LAFC begins play this week. Despite Columbus' good performance, however, I still am standing on my word. Selling players in the middle of the season. Well, star players, star players now, not you, you can sell average guys. That's fine. Whatever. Selling star players overseas in the middle of the season is still not good. Because you got to remember. Even though you're a global brand. You are still an American based league. And us sports fans in America, losing our star players to another country in the middle of the season, that is unacceptable. And it is foreign to us. Those of us who watch NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball, NHL, we're not used to seeing that. We're not used to seeing our star players lead to go play for another team overseas in the middle of the season. Now, I know some of you are thinking, you're, you're saying, well, this is soccer. This is not NFL. Soccer is different. Well, guess what? This is not about soccer fans. This decade is not about attracting soccer fans. This decade is about attracting the average sports fan who typically doesn't watch soccer to start watching soccer. Because unless even though you're a global brand, you will only go as far as the Americans take you. You cannot, you cannot forget about your American support and how the typical average American sports fan thinks. It is better if you, if your star players are sold at the end of the season, not in the middle of the season. And this is something that you have to explain to the players. I don't think MLSPA is doing a good job on that. That's something that MLSPA, that's something that you have to do a better job of, of explaining to the players and establishing that amongst the players. Like MLS, MLSPA and MLS got to, they got to get on the, the same page when it comes to that. The thing that you start MLS players have to understand, you playing in MLS during this decade, is not about, is not only about you. You're serving as a pioneer to grow the popularity of this sport. Even though Columbus Crew sold Zillarion and after one game is looking good, they're looking fine, it is still a gamble. Columbus wins the gamble if they win something this year. 
They either got to win Leaks Cup, Supporter Shield, and good luck trying to catch up with Sissy, or MLS Cup Championship. If Columbus, who was my original preseason pick to win Leaks Cup, if they end up winning up winning something after this sale, it was a good gamble. If they don't win anything, if they don't win Leeds Cup, Supporter Shield, or MLS Cup Championship, this turned out to be a bad gamble. This has only been one game. So we'll see. We'll see. Now, the main message. The League's Cup has far exceeded. Ex the League's Cup expansion has far exceeded expectations. I repeat, the first edition of the League's Cup expansion. Well, this is the first time where every single MLS and every single Liga Max team is participating. It has far exceeded expectations. Why? Well, because there was no expectations to begin with. Because none of us knew how this was going to, like, what the outcome was going to be. Me, personally, I thought that MLS teams was going to treat this like the U.S. Open Cup where we just see a roster full of MLS Next Pro guys and a bunch of teenagers that we never heard of before. That's how what I thought MLS was going to treat this tournament like. But no. MLS has treated this more serious than not only U.S. Open Cup, but also CCL. Because... In the CCL, you still have MLS team that just throw a bunch of random teenagers that we never even heard before. All main starters, all key players have been playing for every MLS team during this league's cup. The ones who are healthy. Every single MLS team has taken this league's cup serious. That is how they exceeded, they far exceeded expectations because a lot of us thought that MLS was going to treat this like the U.S. Open Cup. A lot of us thought that MLS was going to treat this like the first round of the CCL or now it's called CCC. However, I am still not sold on some MLS teams remaining in this tourney. And I'm about to call you out. You teams that I'm not sold on, I am personally about to call you out. Now, before I call out these teams that I'm not sold on, MLS teams typically do a good job of proving me wrong, of making me look like an idiot, of making me look like a fool when I call them out. This is why I like calling out MLS teams. Because they see what the critics are saying. They hear what the critics are saying. And that adds more fuel to their fire to want to go out and prove the naysayers wrong. And that is what us fans want to see. We want to see you play hard. We want to see you put out much effort. Yet and still, some of these teams that I'm about to name, it doesn't matter how much effort you put out there. It doesn't matter how hard you try. I'm still not sold on you. And I believe that you should not have made it past the first round. There's a lot of teams that's supposed to be sitting down at home with Atlanta United and the Seattle Sounders. And New York City FC is one of those teams. Yeah, I know you scored five points on Toronto. But guess what? We all know Toronto is not only the worst team in the entire country of Canada. Toronto is not only the worst team in North America. Toronto is the worst team in North America, Central America, the Caribbean, and South America combined. 
Toronto FC is the worst soccer team in the Western Hemisphere. So any and everybody should be able to beat Toronto FC. Even Tulsa FC of USL can beat Toronto. Even Union Omaha of USL League One can beat Toronto. Toronto, that's how bad Toronto is. So you, New York City, you don't get a pass for beating Toronto. You still got some work to do and you still got to prove us. You still got to prove it to us. And then here's another thing, New York City. You are not the best soccer team in New York this year. The Red Bulls are slightly, just slightly, by a, by a tiny mustard seed. They are slightly better than you. And they got more swag than you. You saw those new jerseys they released today? Uh, honoring hip hop culture. So New York, New York Red Bulls got a slight little edge on you. And if they beat you this Thursday, they win the bragging rights of King of New York this year. So New York City, they're, they're, they're one of the teams that I'm not sold on. They, they, New York City, you just better thank the soccer god that Toronto was in the same group as you. DC United is another team that got lucky to make it past the first round. And here's another thing. I don't understand the point system in this Leagues Cup because there's just a lot of teams, MLS teams, that I believe shouldn't have made it past the first round. They just didn't look good enough. Houston, Chicago, even though you play well against Minnesota. That recent match against Pueblo, unacceptable, Chicago. Unacceptable. You can do better than that. And this is one thing that frustrates me about you, Chicago. One day you perform really well and you look like you can be the best team in North America. And then a couple of days later, you look like the worst team in North America. That's why it's just so frustrating to be a Chicago Fire fan. I'm not sold on Portland. I'm not sold on Kansas City. I'm not sold on Nashville. I'm not sold on Vancouver. Now, all of you can still prove me wrong and make me look like a fool because look, I'm not prideful enough to, to, I don't mind announce saying when, when I'm wrong. I don't have a problem being proven wrong. It's not a big deal to me. It's sports. It's just sports. So if you prove me wrong, I, I'm not ashamed enough to just to, to admit I'm wrong. I like it when people prove me wrong. Make me look like the fool. Don't make me look right. If you make me look right, it looks bad on your organization. So prove me wrong, New York City. Prove me wrong, Chicago. Prove me wrong, D.C. United, Houston, Kansas City, Nashville, Vancouver, Portland. Prove me wrong. Until then, I'm standing still on my word. You did not deserve to make it past the first round. You got lucky. Now, the teams that I am sold on. Philadelphia. But I might have to put a question mark on the Philadelphia Union. Because... Every single time we get excited about the Philadelphia Union, they once they make it to the championship game, they always choke. Why is Philadelphia Union, why are they allergic to lifting up a trophy? Is it some kind of material that the trophy is made with that causes the Philadelphia Union to want to stay away from? Trophies? What kind of material is made in the trophies that causes the Philadelphia Union to be allergic to winning championships that prevents them from holding up the trophy? Uh, is, is it not vegan enough? It, 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 it doesn't have vegan ingredients? Philadelphia Union? 
let us know. Let MLS know. Let FIFA, CONCACAF know the type of materials that is used to make the trophies that you are allergic to. That's causing you not to be able to hold up the trophies. Because every time you play really good, you make it to the championship and then you just choke. You choke and you pass out. How about you change that during the League's Cup? We are tired of seeing you make it to the championship match and not winning. It's getting to the point where we really don't want to see you make the championship because we know what's going to happen when you make the championship. You just choke. Stop choking Philadelphia Union. New England. You know, this Bruce Arena situation caught me off guard. There's a lot of things that's that's going on in MLS this summer that's just catching me off guard and I really don't understand it. I'm not going to talk much about it because I don't know what's going on. But Bruce Arena is really good for Major League Soccer. Hopefully he didn't say anything that would cause him to lose his job. Because Bruce Arena being in New England, it reminds me of Bill Belichick of the NFL. Bruce Arena is the Bill Belichick of Major League Soccer. He's really good for Major League Soccer. And it's good that he's in New England. I like it that he's in New England. So hopefully it's not too bad. Hopefully he'll be back next week. Hopefully. And we can just move on from whatever he did. You know I'm sold on Miami. I'm sold on Salt Lake. Even though that recent match against one of the Liga Mets team, they performed bad. But look, it happens. I think it was against Monterey. Monterey is one... One of the best teams in this entire tourney, not only in, not only they're one of the best League of Mexico teams, they're one of the best League's Cup teams. They're top three. I'm not going to name my top three teams yet. I'm going to name them after this round, after the round of 32. Because during this round of 32, we, we still got to get, get rid of the, the pretenders. There's still a lot of pretenders in this League's Cup. And we're going to find out who the true contenders are in this round. So I'm not going to name my top three teams yet. I'm going to wait until after the round of 32 when we make it to the Sweet 16. I'm sold on Minnesota. Even though they had a bad performance against Chicago. So like I said, there's still a lot of pretenders. It's, it's a, lot of a lot of inconsistent teams still. I'm sold on Dallas. I am sold on the Ohio boys. I'll close on this. One thing you need to keep in mind is this. Major League Soccer has never won the League's Cup. I repeat, ever since the first League's Cup competition in 2019, Major League Soccer is 0-2 in the League's Cup. In 2019, Cruz Azul won. In 2021, the Seattle Sounders could have been the first MLS team to ever win a League's Cup in Las Vegas. But they lost to Club Lyon, the same Club Lyon team that beat LAFC for the CCL title in Los Angeles. Lyon is a team that is used to winning championships on American soil. They won the League's Cup in 2021 in Las Vegas. And then this year, they won the CONCACAF Champions League in Los Angeles. So Leon is has already proven that America is their home away from home. Leon is has told us, they already proven to us that it doesn't matter where they play an MLS team. Whether it's in Mexico, whether it's in uh, America, whether it's in the North Pole, whether it's in Hawaii, they will always beat an MLS team in a championship game. That's what Leon is saying. I want to see an MLS team win the League's Cup this year. It's time to break the losing streak. We got too many damn losing streaks against Liga Max. Way too many losing streaks. 
it's time to end these losing streaks against Liga Max. Who is going to be the MLS team to win the League's Cup for the first time ever? Who, who is going to be the first MLS team to ever win a League's Cup? It definitely won't be the Seattle Sounders. They're already out. And the Seattle Sounders is, is a team that I might have to talk about in another monologue because the way they have, they have, they have fallen, it, it's, it's, it's starting to look sad. It's really starting to look sad. Who is going to be the first MLS team to win a Lakes Cup? Who is going to be the MLS team to break the, the two year losing streak against League of Max? Because in 2020, it didn't take place due to the pandemic. 2022, it was like, uh, it was treated more like, uh, an exhibition or I would say friendly, but you know, soccer terminology, a friendly is like a major match. An exhibition is not a major match. So it was treated as an exhibition. So technically speaking, this is year three of the league's cup. Who is going to win? Who's going to be the first MLS team to win it? And will there be an MLS team to win it this year? Because I'm telling you right now, Monterey is looking good. Monterey is looking really good. And based on what I've seen in the Leeds Cup so far, as of now, it doesn't look like any team, MLS, nor Liga Mex can stop Monterey. That's what it's looking like right now. So we'll see. Round of 32, we are going to find out who the real contenders are because there's still a lot of pretenders in this Elite Cup. 